Hello and welcome back to the Dad and Sons podcast. We are back after after a surprisingly lengthy hiatus that had us doing a weird episode off schedule in December, and now we're back off schedule in January. I wonder if we'll be on schedule next week for the Dad Awards. But we're returning this year with a new format and a new concept that I guess we can only do this year. It's the past games of the decade, according to, to the dads. The decade uh, the, reviewed the dads decade. by the dads. It's dad. you ever just like hear dad go on a rant about how they <laughs> apparently had an entirely different decade than you? That's what we're gonna do for the whole episode. The dad's decade, guys. Isn't it? Isn't it super weird to say twenty twenty? Yes. I want to say cyber year twenty twenty zero for a while until I get tired of that. It, it feels weird to be alive and safe in twenty twenty. Well. <laughs> That's probably <laughs> relative for you. If you guys would stop bombing people from the Middle East, I think we'd be fine. Yeah, well, you know, a majority of us didn't actually vote for that. It's, oh, it's man. extremely outdated rules that oh, exist to have this one, states huh? get slaves 200 <laughs> years ago and count in. them as a vote even though they couldn't as anyways that's from prior century the problems we're dealing with now may be the result of centuries of build-up but the past decade we've experienced in games is just a few years that we've been around to experience but you know unlike previous decades we're like old now like we know what the whole decade felt like so, as adults the whole way through yeah so how old were you guys when it was 2010 I'm strumming on the harp, two, if you will. Twenty. Twenty. Two two thousand ten. What were we doing in two thousand ten? Well, how you guys? First, first of all, how old were you for context? Twenty. I, I would have been I, twenty. Yeah, I was twenty as well. Yeah, so we were all oh, brand no. new oh. spring chickens <laughs> <laughs> in the world. I we were I, spring I was chickens. socially awkward. I was like then nothing a, a very changed. different character. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> man but yeah i was still in college playing games out of a dorm room on a gaming pc and an xbox 360 i brought my old gamecube with me everything else stayed home i, I, I was, didn't get a ps3 for some reason i was in university playing smash brothers every day so nothing has changed mm -hmm. yeah every, everyone had had melee in their dorm room back then, and I wonder Brawl. I wonder if that's still a thing. The college Brawl. kids these days still have melee parties. Brawl. Was that just a millennial Brawl. college experience? Yes. We, were, we were playing Brawl. I remember a year of Brawl in the dorms, but that oh, didn't we come playing... out in 2010. No, it came out in, like, 2007. Uh, let's see what came out in 2010. Bayonetta, which I didn't well, get no, around no, to until like 2017. We should, we, should explain, we should explain the format of this episode. What are, what are we doing? We're, we're going to be reminiscing on what we were doing in our own personal lives against what the entire game industry was doing. So I have an outline here listing like between 10 to 20 of the major releases e that year. The game of the years as chosen by, for the years they existed at least, Polygon, GameSpot, IGN, the GDC Developers' Choice Awards, and some headlines of major news stories. And we're all going to compare that with, with what we were actually caring about and what we were actually doing. What was our so that... favorite game of each year, basically? Oh, oh, oh okay. okay. <laughs> I was really confused for a second. Right. It might not be the games that came out that <laughs> Matt year. Is, Matt has read nothing of the Discord in <laughs> three weeks. I've totally read discord that wasn't working i i i meticulously made a four page outline with with tables and data I see. And, and a list of of questions to direct the conversations that we have already dramatically derailed away from so i'll go ahead and like like i guess try to use my examples to get us started i was in college in the dorms still had a budget where i could buy like one big game a year and still had the time and mentality where i could play one big game a year and for 2010 for me that was Fallout New Vegas. I spent a shitload of 2010 and a good chunk of 2011. I want to say almost the summer of 2011 playing Fallout New Vegas. Love Fallout New Vegas. Got, oh my god, Fallout New Vegas. One of my favorite games ever. Cool way to begin the decade, but kind of a weird time in my life in retrospect. Well, uh, yeah, so 2010, I, I don't know, because when I was looking back at like all the games that got released over the past decade, 2010 was the hardest 
2010 was tied with 2015 for my hardest year. Like, I was in... When I made the list, looking at 2015 compared to all the other years when you make this list is an intimidating beast. Yeah, it is is intimidating. We're we're going to be spending more time on that one for sure. But, like, 2010, I was in my second year of university, and I was playing a lot of broken Wii homebrew stuff. When Holy you could do the shit. Zelda Twilight Princess <laughs> hack, and you could basically oh, install yeah, any with the Wii mailman. game, yeah, you could basically get through. So I was playing a lot of Smash Brothers Brawl, a lot of Mario Kart, but I remember that year had so many good games. Like just some of the games was like the first time I played a Yakuza game. Yakuza Three came out that year. Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver remakes. Scott Pilgrim came out that year. Halo Reach came out F- that year r.i.p xenoblade chronicles super meat boy came out that year yeah that's funny because when i think of super meat boy i think of a like 2008 2009 situation with yeah. that, that you uh, think early, of yeah, and, you think indie game the movie like uh xbox live arcade right you know the the right games of the indie summer or whatever it was called uh like that series but yeah that was 2010 obviously rdr red dead redemption came out that year but there are there are like three games that stand out for me, and it's hard for me to choose a favorite between the three of them, which is Super Mario Galaxy Two, Bayonetta, and Mass Effect Two. Mass Effect Two, man. Bayonetta was one of the best action games I've ever played, and I love it to death. Mario Galaxy was just more great 3D Mario, but Mass Effect Two, man, and Bayonetta. Oh, it's so hard to choose between the two of them. Yeah, I had a lot of fun with Mass Effect 2 as well. Um, oh, it's so good. Looking at the list, we got <laughs> The Last Guardian. Did that really come out no, in 2010? No, it did not. I was no, looking it did at not. That's got to be an error. It's <laughs> like 2016 or something. That's, that's a George fuck up. That's like 2017, yeah. I think. Yeah, let me correct that. Besides that, we got Halo Reach. Oh, I played Rage. I don't know how I feel about that one. Yeah, I don't. Mm. Yeah, no. Ma- Mass yeah. Effect Two, I, I, I didn't play Mass Effect One before I played Mass Effect Two. I don't know about you guys. Did you play Mass Effect One before you played Mass yeah. Effect Two? Yeah. Yep. I didn't, and I just jumped straight into Mass Effect Two, and What's still. Wrong with you? Hey, dude! I didn't have to go through the fucking shitty ass Mike. Uh, what is it? Mako missions, whatever they're called. Mako, Mako missions. Mako. The, dr- Mako the missions. driving shit for Mass Effect One. I uh, went back and played Mass Effect One. Then. Shut up! It was uh. terrible. <laughs> <laughs> it's well, so Mass bad. Effect Two is the best of the trilogy. It is easily the best, but not only that, I think it's Bioware's best. Yeah, mm. their last good game. I think it's Bioware's best. And Knights of the Old Republic is amazing. Yeah, that's that's before 2009. We cannot include Dragon Age Origins on this list. No. Even though I remember playing ME2 and DAO around the same time in my life, which probably would have been 2010, we cannot say that Dragon Age Origins was a game of the decade. Matt, 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 what were you doing in 2010? I was working an IT job. And uh, by Kendall in um, in Florida, and I would go home. There was a blockbuster near me, and I would pick up a game and play it, like like every not every night, but like always have something to play every uh, every week. So I went through Red Dead Redemption. Didn't finish it because I just it, I thought of it as so boring at the time. <laughs> Yeah. I thought you were going to say, like, playing too much Blackjack or something. Because I played no. a lot of Blackjack in that game. I thought oh, I it was re- boring. And I, I remember I, R- RDR1 having a lot of the holding down A while listening to characters talk as you ride your horse. Oh, yeah, the auto-running horse. Like, as I recall, I think RDR2 actually performed better with critics than RDR1 did because... It's it's slowness is more deliberate and artsy this time or something. I don't know. You guys comment better than I can. Yeah, and I play two, and I I love two. But why um, didn't you like one? I, I mean, this was ten years ago. <laughs> your, your, <laughs> my, my attention, you're you saying your attention span was shorter mm-hmm. then? I get. I guess so. I guess my attention so. span I, is I, way shorter now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't know if I would like the games I was playing no. in 2010. 
I don't see myself watching a show like Breaking Bad when I was 20 <laughs> years old. Oh. I think now I appreciate a lot Save more. It. Save the artistic masterpiece. Yeah. I, don't, I I think I was just different back then. I mean, I was I was different back then for sure. Um, <laughs> Mass Effect Two, I loved, um, but you know that was back in the day when Bioware was making some good stuff. Um, Halo Reach, I remember being like, "What is happening to Halo?" Oh, um, no, we, no, can and we can, were just can, like can, reminiscing can on that I have, when the re-release. Can, yeah, yeah, it, it's like, the same conversation. We've had the same conversation like yeah, four times on this podcast. Like, Halo I, Reed. I, when you play Halo Three, it's just like no. anything after that was just like what no. is this? No, I, I, as I mentioned when Reykjavik was on Halo Reach, man, that in university when I could like, skip lectures and just play Halo all day online. Oh, oh, you, oh, it's so good. See, I, I, I grew up on one, two, and three. Go over Who, people's houses, have land nothing. parties. You know. You know in retrospect, looking back at this past decade compared to the previous ones, I think I would have liked Halo Reach fine back then, but been most disappointed by how similar it looks and feels to 3. When going from Halo 1 to 2 to 3, you're like jumping different assets to different versions of the engines to different platforms entirely. I miss when the sequel felt like a whole new engine mm -hmm. rather than like going from Halo 3 to Reach is a much smaller step, even though I really enjoyed Reach. I, I just hate how in the moment of, of criticizing things, you always have to compare it to the previous ones. And in the moment, that can kind of dampen things when in retrospect, you can get a better picture. Yeah. I, I love New Vegas, too, as well. Yeah. I really New love Vegas, New Vegas. New Vegas is great. And Limbo. I remember playing the hell out oh, of that. Oh, Limbo came out that year. Super Meat yeah. Boy. Deus Ex, Deus Ex Human Revolution, um, Dead Space 2. Oh, fuck, Wait, I'm already at 2011. I'm reading 2011, 2011 games. I was going to say, what are you talking about, George? <laughs> so, I'm too excited. 2011 was was so much of a bigger deal. So, Ouch. major news, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> not much. Yeah, but, no, it says Minecraft entered alpha. Wait, yeah, is that, yeah, for 2010. Is 2010 the year Minecraft came out? It, it entered alpha. Oh, we, we have Xbox Live for the OG Xbox is discontinuing that year. The the rollicking, memorable launches of the PlayStation moved and Connect. Yeah, we can move on to the next year. What? But 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 Minecraft though. Minecraft was Minecraft was good back then. Well, that's the alpha launch, not not the like full final final real release. It's, I don't know. Minecraft's been around since two thousand eight anyway. It's been an alpha. It was big and alpha before it was. Like released, like I don't know when it was released. Was it was like uh, not that long ago. Was it? 11, 11, 11, I, what? I think, anyways. Minecraft final. No. It's gotta Minecraft be to leave beta get a final release on November eleventh, two thousand eleven. It does what? feel newer because they keep updating it. But it's, I, but it's oh been around God. for so long. Like even yeah. you, even you saying it was released in two thousand and ten in alpha feels like. Too wow. close to me. Minecraft feels like it's been around since 2007 to me. Well, I just I just added it to that 2011 list that Holy keeps distracting God. me. So, yeah. George, tell us, you know, we can't, we only have like 10 minutes at time to talk about each year. So tell us what the fuck was going on in video game news in, in 2010. Uh, nothing, nothing. That's why I, we can move on. We oh, can, yeah, we yeah, can hurry up. We well, I, I'm we can, gonna we can guess, dust our way over. I'm gonna guess that RDR was like the major winner of prizes that year. Yeah, RDR and Mass Effect Two wiped the Game of the Year awards for yeah. 2010. Yeah, that makes sense, I guess. So, 2011, I I remember, I remember Dark where I was for 2011. Dark Souls. Skyrim. Dark Souls. I was at the midnight launch Dark for Souls. Skyrim. We got Bastion Two, Dark like one Souls. of the best indie games to come out in a while. Dark Souls. Wait. Where's Demon Souls? You keep saying Dark Souls. Where's Demon Souls? Demon that's Souls the came one out in 2009, right? Like 2000, yeah, earlier, not decade. Oh, wow. 2011 had so many great games, yet Dark Souls came out. Uh, we also had the Metal Gear Solid HD collection. Nobody gives a shit. <laughs> 
Portal uh, Halo 2, Four, Skyward Sword. Isn't it weird? Oh yeah, Wait, Portal Two. Does, doesn't this fuck you up a little bit? That Dark Souls came out that year. Yeah, that year also had Skyward Sword and Bastion and Witcher Two. Don't those games feel older than Dark Souls to you? Hmm. Uh... Bastion? I don't know. Skyward Sword? I, they feel older I've, than Dark I've, Souls to me. I've always been playing the PC version of Dark Souls, which has a kind of vintage jank to it from day one. Yeah, because the, <laughs> the fucking frame rate didn't work. That's why. <laughs> yeah, Dark Souls always <laughs> had the menus of a 2006 game to me, so it feels older than it is anyway. Yeah, but its cultural significance on the whole video game landscape is still fresh. As is Sky, I, I will say I don't enjoy the game as much, but like Skyrim was a, a cultural tour de force. That eleven yeah. eleven eleven release date was was something they actually stuck to for better or worse. Would and you I say remember when Skyrim everyone was... had more of an impact on like YouTube creators than it did as a video game? How do you mean? Like it was so like meme worthy popular. Like, there were so right, many videos right. and so many memes and stuff about the game than people playing the game, I want to say. Yeah, I just feel like the YouTube changeover was going to happen a few years afterwards, even though Skyrim would still be extremely popular for the rest of the whole damn decade. Like, fucking, what was the latest version of Skyrim to come out? I, was uh, it the Switch version or the Alexa the, version? I think it was the... Yeah, the Switch version, I guess. The Alexa version, if it counts, was also. Oh, and then there was the L.A. The Noir. H Come on, guys. L.A. 2011? L.A. Noir? Was... Wow. Remember Did you when guys that play... came out and the faces were all weird? And... <laughs> yeah. They looked like cats. <laughs> it's so I weird. It I don't know. I love like it. cats. <laughs> I'm, I'm a little taken aback by how much I don't remember L.A. Noir compared to the others on this list. Yeah, Witcher 2 came out that year. That's another one I didn't get around to for five years afterwards. Yeah. Did, yeah. <laughs> did, you, guys, did yeah. you guys play El Shaddai? No. Oh, no. Do you guys know what El Shaddai is? No. It's some obscure Japanese bullshit. No. Oh, I can't. I, I thought George I thought George you at least might know what it is. No, I know what it is. Oh, I just okay. never played it. Oh, you should play it. It's intriguing. So in 2011, there there is a game other than Dark Souls I would like to talk about that basically Dead Space consumed, 2, obviously. And that consumed not Dead Space 2. Although a friend of mine beat the final boss drunk when we couldn't beat it. We were playing Dead Space 2 in my university house. And yeah. we could we couldn't beat the final boss. And then my my friend Sean came in wildly drunk after after a night out, and he was like, "Fuck you guys, let me do this." And he took the controller and he beat it first try. <laughs> he absolutely annihilated the boss immediately. And he, ne so you, like, he never had played the, the game before. Memory wrong? No, he just never played the game before. He just fucking went ham, and it won. <laughs> it was amazing. Other than Dead Space, there's a game that consumed my life and that year, which is Marvel vs. Capcom 3. In the None of your games are on my outline. Fuck me. Well, <laughs> you wrote them to your taste, so I don't know. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> so I'm, I basically cross-referenced the list between what Google says were the top games of blank year, what Wikipedia says were critically acclaimed games of that year, and what I skimmed from the list of, like, <laughs> scandals and or stuff I played from the entire list of releases that year. I, Do you guys not play Liam Marvel vs. Capcom 3? No, I wasn't playing Marvel vs. Capcom 3. What? I've never had any great deep affinity for Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Oh, man, it was the nah. best. I, I was installing all the poop mods for Skyrim that year. <laughs> I was more into 2, and when I saw 3, I was just like, eh. Ah, oh, it consumed my life for like a year. It was like, you know, like Street Fighter 4 built up the fighting, it like revived the fighting game community. Yeah. And then Evo started to get really popular as like Twitch was also starting to get popular. Has it, has it been that long? It's been that long. Yeah. But then 
Marvel vs. Capcom came along and it was like the first brand new fighting game outside of Street Fighter 4 that caught on and it was like an obsession. I love that game so much. I played it every day in university. It was insane. Well, uh, good thing you were there and not in Japan because um, 2011 saw a few game projects be delayed because of the Fukushima earthquake disaster. Sadly, That's where yes. the, the, the Kojima I'm alright meme comes from. Meanwhile, in America, on the other hand, oh, this is like a relic of how much better the conversation over games used to be back then. 2011 was when the USA Supreme Court decided video games count as free speech, which means they're art! Video games are art now as of 2011. That's that's when the authorities decided <laughs> that. That's just the rules now. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the same year that Kojima was on the cover of like Edge magazine and said video games aren't art? That was 2008 and or 9. Um, <laughs> so very the, close. <laughs> the 3DS came out in 2011. You guys remember that? What? <laughs> that feels what had so a very... long ago. What the hell? 2000. 2011 3DS was a very different beast from the rest of the 3DS's lifespan. 2011 was when it had a, a, a really, really poor launch and I believe sold sold numbers highly competitive with the Wii U, which I remember, uh, we'll be getting to in a hot second spe too. Speaking of Street Fighter 4, I remember the only game I was able to play on my brand new launch 3DS was Super Street Fighter 4, the 3DS port, which oh, was snap. abysmal. So wait, you were there? You're you you know about the 3DS launch? I bought a 3DS on launch, yeah. What are some memories? I feel like you'd have a I story to tell. I don't have any. Oh. I remember well, maybe the, that's the I, story. I remember experimenting with the AR cards it came with. Do you remember the AR cards? Mm-hmm. Like I I just remember <gasps> that. <laughs> I bought my 3DS in like 2016, didn't I? You did, yeah. Uh you guys want to move on to 2012 or yeah. Matt, you got anything from 2011 or I, I'm, any I'm, life highlights, Matt, that you'd like to spill? <laughs> no, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Gears of War three came out and that was, that was interesting. That was, that was an interesting time for Gears, <laughs> Gears of War. <laughs> oh, snap. Wow. That's when Cliffy Gears... B was, uh, was going crazy with his stuff, man. We're know. we're at Gears Five right now, which means there's going to be a Gears Four and then a Gears of War Judgment on the way there. Ugh. And I remember at Judgment, he like didn't work on it and wrote an angry blog post mm. about how they ruined his baby or something. And he ruined his baby in three. I don't know what he's talking Aww. about. No. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, do you guys not think Dark Souls was the best game that year? I didn't. Yeah. I didn't play Dark Souls. I played Demon Souls. Ah, yeah, it okay. took me a while, but of the games I was playing in 2011, I was still going through Fallout New Vegas. I went through Deus Ex HR. That you was know, also of the pretty games good. Yeah, that was pretty on, good. On this list that I was playing, like Human Revolution, Mass Effect 2, Skyrim, and, and some Metal Gear Solid like made that year really great. I didn't get around to Dark Souls for, for a while later, but I still have great big memories of 2011. Playing a lot of those into 2018... Which is probably why I don't have as many fond memories of the actual... Ah, did I just say 18? I meant 12. <laughs> 2012. I don't have a lot of fond memories of 2012 releases, but I had fun still playing through 2011's games then. Uh, Cave we got Story. Far Cry 3. Far Cry 3 came out 2012. Yeah, Cave Story. There is, so, uh, there is only one game I want to talk about here that I want to diverge to Matt. Oh Matt? my god. Hey, oh, this is the year oh, I don't know Guild Wars 2 came out. <laughs> the career starter. This is the the reason you exist today. <laughs> <laughs> the man you are oh is because god. Guild Wars 2 came out in 2012. This is like um this is like during the time where like I had some extra time and I was like making music just for fun, like stupid stuff, like, you know, putting clips together and stuff like that. And I really got into Guild Wars 2 looking on game, the game trailers. You remember when game trailers was a thing? Yeah. Yep. Uh, Brandon yeah. Jones and everybody. All of yeah, the, uh, was... what are they called now? Oh, what are yeah, they called yeah. now? That Patreon thing. I don't know. I forgot. Oh, they, they switched to 
Patreon, all of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, what are they called now? God, why can't I even remember? Brandon Jones and the game trailers a lot. I forget oh. what they're called. They they oh, set up a Patreon and they do their own thing now. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. It's funny, Griffey. I don't know. So, so, I know what you're talking about, though. <laughs> I forgot what it's funny. <laughs> I keep thinking about the Try Guys, but I know it's not them. It's just some other some other group. Um, Gregory, Greggy, something Greggy, right? No, 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 that's 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 Greg Miller and those guys. Yeah, the, the IGN guys. Okay. No, no, that, Th- that kind so of There's so many funny. white guy groups that I can't keep. Yeah, like, okay, keep yeah, all that's true. together. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so um, Guild Wars oh. Guild Wars Two came out that year. <laughs> Guild Wars Two. <laughs> Guild I'm not gonna Wars I'm not gonna let you get away with this. <laughs> this is the year that defines you, Matt. <laughs> um. Okay. So yeah, I got into it. I was like, oh, you know, this is seems like a really cool game, and uh, I liked MMOs. I grew up, you know, playing like RuneScape and Maple Story and everything, and I was just like, okay. Um. And I didn't know YouTube was this like platform where you could just like create stuff. So I, once I figured that out, I was started creating videos. And during the time, that's when like, um, there was a couple other Guild Wars 2 YouTubers, uh, Tube Elephant, which some people from here probably know, um, Wooden Potatoes, that still does it, and um, Phaletic, and just a, a couple guys who just don't do anything anymore. We were there in the beginning just doing a bunch of Guild Wars 2 videos and we were all like collab with each other. And it was like all like a very friendly, positive community. And from there, I started doing more and more stuff and kind of getting better at it. And, uh, you know, started getting flown out to like, you know, ArenaNet, the developers and stuff and started meeting the devs and stuff. It was, it was pretty cool. Some some friends I still talk to now. Um, Yeah, that's that's Guild Wars 2. It, it was a good time. It was a good time. I, I obviously, you know, when you, once you get a little bit older, obviously we're going through the decade. As you get a little older, you're like, oh, I, I don't want to do this for the rest of my life. I don't want to stick to one game. For this. It's very, it's in a box. It's boring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's not that I don't like the game. It's more like, you know, you, you kind of look like, this is not my, this is not what I want. Yeah. You know? And that's when I kind of diverge out of it. Yeah, kind of met George. Be- and everything after changed. After or before then? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> after, because yeah. t- 2011 was a super duper big year for me too. 2012. Uh, after 2012, God, I'm so bad at this. After after all that time spent appreciating the American Desert and and Fallout New Vegas and then Red Dead Redemption, which I had played through the previous two years, that. I feel might have had something to do with me wanting to go on this this bicycle trip across the American desert in 2012. I graduated college this year, that year. I, I did the bike trip that year, and then I came home wanting to launch the channel that year. 2012 sounds like, like it was a big deal for a lot of us, but I don't remember playing the games on this list there. Like, I was doing doing important things and playing 2011 games. So, <laughs> sounds so- like George. So 2012, yeah. old games. <laughs> <laughs> playing games three years behind everybody else. So uh, 2012 was the year I joined Rockstar. Oh, wow. So, like straight out of the university. Actually, it, 2012 was like when a lot of things happened for me. Like I finished university. Uh, I did my GameSpot internship as well. I, I worked with Danny O'Dwyer and Lucy James at GameSpot and all that. And then I went straight away and worked at Rockstar. And that's when I started working at Rockstar. And I didn't have, because I moved across the UK to go work there, I didn't have anything but my 3DS. And a game that came out that year that was like my accompanying partner in in getting through the late, the severe late nights, not that anything has changed (laughs) today, (laughs) um, is Fire Emblem Awakening. Like... Fire Emblem came back and was this amazing new series that obviously now is super famous and Fire Emblem was like on its last legs and they released Fire Emblem Awakening and it sold really well but I remember the only game I had to play because I was kind of done with everything else that was on the 3DS because it was still kind of not quite there after its launch but then Fire Emblem Awakening came out and a few other games but 
I remember spending some late nights playing Fire Emblem Awakening that year. It's a good that, game. Yeah, I, it's an amazing game, and it's it's, it's the last Fire Emblem I completed. It's so good. I still remember fondly now, like playing on my shitty secondhand couch that I bought for my apartment when I was working at Rockstar. Yeah, yeah no, <laughs> the, the, I don't remember too many games that year. I remember that's the year <laughs> Mass Effect Three came out that year as well. Not that anyone gives a shit about that. Oh man, I really played that. Quick and I turned around not to play it, and I think he hasn't played yes. it to this day. Like yeah, we were just talking, we were just talking about Mass Effect Three in 2010 10. and 11, and yeah. now like they they churned that out fast. It's weird to think that came out the same year it. as Guild Wars Two. But yeah, yeah, like there are other games that came out that year: Diablo Three, XCOM, Fez. Uh, There's some good Pace ones Story. here, but I'm not. I'm not seeing any that feel yeah, like, like games of the decade. Like like I'm no. seeing Far Cry 3 standardized a formula. Oh, this is the year games started getting like um, self-aware and meta and weird with Far Cry 3 and Spec Ops The Line. And Max Payne 2 to an extent, I guess. And Journey. And The Walking Dead. Yeah, games got smarter in 2012. I'll say that much. But I yeah. Played. Or at least they tried to. I, I will I always remember Fire Emblem Awakening just for now creating my love affair with Fire Emblem, but also... Keeping me God. keeping me warm during my long Rockstar days. I remember having a friend over to play through The Walking Dead on mm. a uh, all one marathon and and we did cry at the end of that night on the TV with when, when I hauled the computer out to it instead of using the Steam Link or streaming software. I don't think Steam Link worked at that time cuz I remember trying no, no. to play The Walking Dead it was but all local. <laughs> yeah, I did, yeah. Man. 2012, Batman. what a year. Uh, I, Journey came out that year. I played it late, but I, I enjoyed Journey. It was like a quick yeah, game. I think yeah. I played Journey on my first travel back home to, at a friend's house after Rockstar. Do we agree, though, that it should have been the Game of the Year wipe that year? It got Game of the Year from GameSpot, IGN, and the GDC Choice Awards. Polygon gave it to The Walking Dead. Dishonored Walking... also came out that year. Yeah. I would nah. I I I don't think Journey was that powerful. I'm not saying it's not a good game. I'm just saying it's just not. Yeah. I mean, all this other The Walking Dead came out. Like I mm -hmm. cried, and I don't remember I'd, the last time I to cried at a game since then. Um, like 2012 might have been one of the more milder years, but still had some great hard hits. Yeah. It's weird reflecting on this. It's funny you saying that. Like reflecting on this decade, looking back at the games that have come out across this decade, I was surprised at just like. Oh wow, that game came out this year? That game came out that year? Wow, this yeah. decade was like really fucking strong. Really yeah. strong. Mark of the Ninja, I played that too. Yeah, That's Mark of the Ninja, game great too. game. Yeah. Amazing. That too. A lot of, lot, lot. It, Limbo was like my first like indie game, and then from there I started just constantly look for them. I, I guess the paradigm for me is over the decade i've seen quality constantly go up i'm i feel like 2012 is when creativity starts to stagnate though specifically with this far cry 3 release i agree like, i still feel, playing that i feel like we're for me it's kind of the opposite i feel like 2012 is the end was the, was the beginning of the end for shitty annual releases like assassin's creed madden fifa like it was the end of that kind of reign where you move into 2013 where we started to have games like hotline miami spelunky and the from 2013 became what is now the gaming like In space in that world, Call of Duty Ghosts is a much less impressive big budget <laughs> Call of Duty release than Black Ops 2. So yeah, 2013, like I guess what what the paradigm you you all see happen that we talk about all the time is that it's now double A games that are the hotness. Maybe maybe these are the two years where that started to to become a strategy for for navigating what, what, these releases. Where's Terraria? Where is it? Good question. Well, that also had a weird oh. tiered release with early access and questionable launch dates. 2011. 11 wow. was Terraria. Wow, holy that, that shit. Terraria is a, is a favorite. That definitely. That's 2011, so I would definitely... 
put that over Skyrim. <laughs> and I'm I'm with you, but I'm pretty sure it was 2014 before I got to it. <laughs> really? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, oh, oh, you mean personally. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. 2012 yeah. is also when Kickstarters and crowdfunding caught on. Yeah. We had Double Fine Adventure, Pillars of Eternity, Octodad, Oculus Rift, um, the AVGN movie, all oh. were... <laughs> I remember that. Well, that still happened. I know you laugh now, but back in the day, like, seeing cheap, quirky, amateur projects get big budgets like that was cool as hell. So yeah, I still budget? think it is. Well, comparatively to the usual AVG in episodes. Oh my god, how did I look in that video of yours? Oh my god, I have to go back and look at it. We did a review, remember? Yeah, yeah, that was <laughs> truly a different time. Yeah, that was. Wait, so yeah. this is 2013. Cringy review. Well, well, that was that was 2012. But let's move on to 2013. Wow. Because in 2013, AAA games start to get real awkward and like. Yes. Like DMC Devil May Cry is is what's happening on that phase of the industry, while Hotline Miami is happening on a whole different phase of the yeah, industry. Spelunky, gone home. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Hotline Miami, gone home, and then the AAA was like Bioshock Infinite, The Last of Us, GTA Five, oh and there's God. there's yours, GTA Five. GTA Five. Matt's freaking out because he's just seen this face from like seven years ago. What is this? I'm just like this <laughs> skinny dude. Oh my god, I don't even look right. Oh Jesus, what was I doing back then? All right, anyways, <laughs> I'm judging myself. <laughs> so, in in the world of weird double A mid budget releases that get really artsy and weird and meta with games. Brothers of Tale of Two Sons come out, Flower comes out, um, and yeah, I also just mentioned Gone Home, but also another big linchpin of this year for me was Papers, Please. I felt ah, like once Papers, Please happened, Papers, games Please couldn't go back year. from that. Yeah, and that was that was my game of the year that year. I think that's one of the most clever, honest examples of how to explore complicated problems through games now. I really wish that momentum had kept up. I feel like, like it lagged before and we're getting to it now again, but... But 2013, I, I think I have better memories of that than 2012. I, I had I was really, really busy in those days. I was working three jobs with the channel being one of them. So, yeah, 2013 was the year GTA 5 came out, but nothing stopped. We we powered through to next gen, which was the year after. Yeah, like next yeah, gen obviously came out 2014, out. but I don't remember much about playing games that year other than playing bioshock infinite and my favorite game of that year which was a link between worlds yeah a link between yeah, that worlds took me a few th- years to get to it but yeah mm-hmm. a link between worlds on the 3ds was fucking amazing that year okay i'm noticing a trend here now that we're like three years in i play the critical darlings and wait for like anything below that for the next year because in 2013 I actually did play through Bioshock Infinite and The Last of Us and I was kind of wondering what the hell we should have just talked about the past three years and when you caught up to the actual decade that's just passed <laughs> well at least like the past three yeah past three. what I'll get to it there's reasons for all this anyways <laughs> yeah I don't know if you guys had that similar feeling but I genuinely. Like it was, it was like I was playing through Grand Theft Auto Four. I felt like like the reviewers were playing a different game than me, and then I got into reviewing and realized that's kind of sort of exactly what happens. Yeah, you have to look at it from a different point of view. But if if you rush through those games it's on, a, on a really tight experience. schedule, yeah, and ignore everything and don't spend a shitload of time thinking about it too hard, yeah. Also, if you don't read Cormac McCarthy's The Road ahead of time. It's probably a way different experience, too. <laughs> Matt, what were you up to in 2013? Jesus Christ. I I can't believe these games came out in 2013. <laughs> I played Antichamber, Bioshock, mm-hmm. two, two Sons. I played Flower, DMC, Hotline, Guacamelee. I love Guacamelee. Jeez. Grand Theft Auto, of course, Last of I played a lot of these, dude. A lot of these. Yeah, yeah. 2013, I think, might have been my busiest year. That might have been the one year where I actually was keeping up with all this shit. Yeah. 
A link between Ride to Hell Earth. Retribution. Jesus Christ. Mm. 13. I played through The Wolf Among Us. I got good at Super Hexagon. I almost said Bunny Hop. Uh, the Stanley <laughs> Parable was damn good fun. Spelunky yeah. came out that year. Yeah, that's, Spelunky. That's I can't something do it, Spelunky. I can't do it. All right. So we also have some very diverse uh, Game of the Years. Um, the Last of Us got IGN and GDC. How is that diverse? <laughs> Well, because we also have A Link Between Worlds <laughs> and Shadow of Mordor and Gone Home. Wait, Shadow of Mordor came out well. that year? I thought it came out in 2014. I I, I, I can double check. You also said the PlayStation 4 came it out in 2014 no, and it was 2013. It, on your list, it says Shadow No, it's 2014. Oh, come the fuck. Okay, fine. So I got Shadow of Mordor wrong. But besides that, <laughs> we're... <laughs> also, oh, PS4 wow, came out twice, in 2014. I don't think so. Did it not? Yeah, yeah. I, I googled it when you mentioned it. November fifteenth, two thousand thirteen. Wow, I don't think I got mine Jesus until two thousand fourteen. Jesus Christ! Oh God! I remember what happened in two thousand fourteen. Fans donated me money to to get that in a new TV. Wow. I, God, I was so busy back then. Oh wow, do you remember um, when console launches were like not a global thing? PS four, November fifteenth, twenty thirteen, in North America. Did it come out later in November the November 29th, PAL, 2013. Japan, February 22nd, uh, 22nd 2014. What? It came, it out, came out later three in months Japan? months later in Japan. Weird. I wonder what they did for three months. <laughs> Carried on playing PS3 games Japan. like they do now. <laughs> I have no idea where it came out later in Japan. That's so weird. So in 2014, I was also working three jobs and extremely busy and not as able to keep up with the shit as well as I did the previous year. But I did play <gasps> through Alien Isolation, Bayonetta 2, Call of Duty Advance Wars, uh, Dark Souls 2, uh, Goat Simulator, uh, Mario Kart 8, uh, uh, Shovel Knight, S Super Smash Brothers for the Wii U. Oh, oh, Super Smash Brothers for the Wii U. I still feel like that's the best Smash game of the decade. It um, isn't, but I understand what you mean. <laughs> Watch Dogs, Jesus 2000, Christ. 2014, I was, hating, I was hating my life. 2014, I hated the two weeks I had to play through Watch Dogs, but I was still having oh, a good time. The channel you? was going smoothly. <laughs> But my God, that, that that Watch Dogs review, I think, is the first time I like felt a sting of burnout as I was going through it. Like like a video game was not a fun way to spend my time. And that was the first time I really felt that with with Watch Dogs. If only I hadn't uh, been playing another open world video game for the past two years prior to that every day of oh, my Wolf life. Wolfenstein The New Order came out that year. That year was full of really short stories it looks like i played through the evil within why did i play through the evil within no wonder i stopped liking games as much after that year evil within was fine that's the pro it was it, bad yeah. risen evil 4 but it was fine Wait. when you have to play it all in like five days you that made makes it your worse. schedule YouTuber and i made man. it bad well, I was also, like, making a lot more views back then, so that's questionable, <laughs> but... Ooh. Ooh, Patreon yeah, yeah. life. More, more, more money now, more views back then, but looking at this list, like, I, I see when it happened, and it was the Watch Dogs number one, Evil Within number two. I remember, I remember just hating my life, working overtime all the time, not Rockstar. feeling anything... Life. Not feeling like a rock star. Just yeah, absolutely. Like hey now, no. I, hey the, now, are you feeling crappy? <laughs> the, but the only things that kept me going, apart from like the odd thing that came along, which was like Shovel Knight, of course, was a fantastic experience. Bayonetta two was great. Dark Souls really two was that, like yeah. you know a kind of a disappointment at the time. Eh. In retrospect, I feel like that game has some some strengths that people it, might have I, missed. Agreed, at agreed. But compared to what came prior, it was a disappointment to everybody. I think. Yeah, but I didn't play Shadow, Demon Souls at the time. Shadow so of Mordor satisfied. was like the biggest surprise because yeah, hey, who thought that game was going to be good? Nobody, and then it turned out pretty great. 
Pretty, um, that turned out pretty damn good. Yeah. Sm- Smash Brothers was like, man, I played so much of that game. But the game that I got addicted to that came out that year that r- almost ruined me because the pressure of staying in Legendary was too much was Hearthstone. Real? Yeah, I could see it. I <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah. what ha- what happened is actually when I was at Rockstar, we had a soccer team for Rockstar, and we would practice on a Wednesday, and we would play a game on a Saturday, and we were in a league, and it was taken very seriously because it's the UK and everybody fucking loves soccer. And I remember for the first time in my life getting injured, and I was not able to play soccer or go to work because I couldn't walk. And I had two weeks off work with a doctor's note, which is the first time that had ever happened in my life. And I had nothing to do. So I decided to play Hearthstone and see how that goes. Lo and behold, I got way too addicted to Hearthstone and didn't go to work for like three weeks. And then got got to Legendary. And I just could The stress of staying in Legendary. If I lost, I was so upset. Because I'd lose rank and then I'd, I'd work so hard to try and get back into Legendary. It was the most stressful experience. I couldn't play that game ever again. <laughs> oh, man. It was stressful. I I loved that game, but it was too much. Yeah, I, I kind of wish I was there just to see that whole big machine start. Man, it was... Yeah. I was fully engrossed so you guys also might remember 2013 2014 as being it might not have felt like this for you guys but for me that was when i noticed i started reading and consuming a lot more games media on youtube um around those days total biscuit was arguing whether or not gone home counts as a game there were (laughs) ftc guidelines being rewritten because of a shadow of mordor um youtube paid off reviewer conspiracy but meanwhile depending on what game forum you were frequenting uh 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 you may or may not have gotten involved with uh <clears throat> gamergate so oh if we're talking about 2014 i feel like hey man like, what were you it's... suspiciously up to in 2014 <laughs> was that the same way out of it <laughs> it's going to have to be mentioned though because the reason why gamer is a funny word in 2019 is because that happened back in 2014 that event in, it, in like august it, to november it weird how the word gamer got a bad reputation but the word gate did not this is why because that was like the first big coordinated anti SJW doxing slash swatting campaign that eventually did lead to people getting killed, which I'll get to in the later years. Whoa. And this in 2014, this was on the New York Times front page. It was below the fold, but still on the front page. It was like bad. people <laughs> normies <laughs> learned about those tactics for for online harassmentism. If you would have told any of us that what is happening in the video game industry right now will affect the 2017 or whatever the hell, like U.S. presidential elections, I would have laughed in your face. 2014 was the year you started to hear the word SJW outside of these weird, angry gaming forums. It was. Like, that's that's when it happened. I don't know. A lot of people think we entered into the alternate timeline in 2012. Maybe, but I feel like shit didn't really get bad until 2014. Like, in terms of me enjoying games and game culture, like, and doing this, there's there's a whole lot more exceptions I got to keep in my head now. Like, oh no, if I say something too leftist, I might get shot by SWAT officers for it. And that's not a concern that we had before 2014. Crazy. I, I think this is when Ethan... Created this uh the video about the was it the um, Law and Order episode? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that he reviewed. Ethan Klein. Ethan, yeah, yeah, yeah. I H three H three. There it is. That, H3. That's, that's his name. Yeah, yeah. That's that's yes, that's yes. what I fully fully started joking around about it. It's that's um that's the way I like to think about it. Very funny. 
Oh, that oh man, for me it was not a joke. Yeah, it was terrifying. Yes. Like watching watching people either resign or have their pets shot or have their oh families like raided by the cops the podcast, was George. You bring it and not being able to say anything <laughs> publicly about it because then that makes you a target. It's been five years and it still shouldn't be as risky to talk about as it is. Is it though? Is it risky? There's some, yeah. I w- I would say there's there's some risk endemic to to I mean, discussing video is, games there online. There is no doubt there is now the undercurrent that is if you say something. I mean, we've said it on the podcast, like when we support developers or we say something antagonistic towards the consumer market or something. It's yeah. like, hey, you fucking leftist pricks. What are you talking about? Fuck video I game days, motherfucker. I have, I have never heard or seen anything of the sort. It's because you're a Gamergate, Matt. That's why. <laughs> I remember you're a Gamer like Gooba. a lot of of weird, artsy, inventive, innovative titles coming out and good games writing coming out earlier in the decade. Like the whole Rab Florence picking on Jeff Keighley for taking a Doritos sponsorship. Like once the criticism started <laughs> aiming more narrower and narrower towards games themselves and game audiences, there's a, a subset of young, angry people who are not willing to accept the the criticism that comes with games being art but in 2011 it was decided that video games are art and should be subjected to the same kind of scary sometimes self-incriminating criticism that any honest observant of an art medium should be able to handle well since we're going over to 10 minutes i'll just say 2014 <laughs> was great um <laughs> i started reviewing games alien isolation was phenomenal it's probably the last oh, yeah. good scary game. Outlast was pretty decent, but I don't, I, that's probably later down on the list. But Alien Isolation was great. Um, Inquisition was all right. It was it was better than two. Oh yeah, remember, that came out that year. Yeah, yeah. you remember Vanishing Vanishing of Ethan Carter, right? With its uh, I never finished. photogrammetry yeah, graphics. No, yeah, <laughs> well, okay, that that game is six years old, right? And if you look up screenshots of don't it, you it looks my like. Finger. You know it's a walking it looks... sim. <laughs> What's wrong with the walking sim? Oh, God. after all that, games aren't allowed to be walking sims now. Oh, I'm sorry that that people actually like walking sims and improve there's a market for it with cool mechanical exploration that can happen. Shadow of Mordor was great. Um, uh, Shovel Knight was great. Sunset Overdrive was one of my faves back then. Oh, shit. That came out as well. That wow. came out. Yeah. Damn. And... This is when the Oculus Rift was becoming a thing, and first time mm-hmm. I tried DK2. it. I'm, yeah, on, DK2. I'm the early adopter, so as as soon as like the release date was announced, I already pre-ordered like immediately. <laughs> You're the reason Palma Lucky's a dickhead. <laughs> yes, I I still have it. I, I, oh, VR. I remember ranting and raving about VR. You remember that, George? Remember that? Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. I was like the only one in that freaking podcast. Everybody's just like, I don't know if VR is gonna last. It's just kick, 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 kick. <laughs> well, I had yet to. Hey, you got me, you got me to deal with. You got me to deal with. Every time, man, you can go back and listen to the tapes. But yeah, that uh, 2014. <laughs> listen to the tapes. <laughs> listen to the tapes. <laughs> um, yeah, but that yeah, 2014 was um except for craziness uh was all right for for games was the can best we, can compared we, to the other years that we, we just mentioned but, yeah. can we can we just shut up and move on to the best yes. year of the yeah decade? oh absolutely absolutely are we do, do we think we're ready yeah, though ready. Yeah, we're, like we're gonna be at 2015 a while we're gonna, right? we're gonna move we're gonna no move more. on to the best best year of the decade by really? far i I, I, I do appreciate that the best year of the decade is the middle year. That makes it easy. And we also unanimously agreed it is the best year of the decade. Oh, well, I, that's did, Matt, right. Matt, are you with us? The it Witcher. Is, yeah, and more, <laughs> and more. Yeah, yeah. Look at the, the game of the years for 2015. Uh, Polygon, of course, picks some weird girly thing, her story. I, I, I On played the other hand, her story. It, her Come story's on. not a girly thing. Have you ever played it, George? Yeah, it's not, well, it's not it's, girly. In it, 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 all the screenshots, there's girls. Anyways, GameSpot's got The Witcher 3. Uh, 
IGN gave it The Witcher 3. GDC gave it The Witcher 3. Who gave Overwatch a game of the year? Hold on. Let me let me look that up. Wait, 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 wait. Is this The Witcher 3 Overwatch? Wait. No. No, no, no. <laughs> guys, guys. Whoa, Your whoa, whoa. The Witcher so 3, th- this, year, this year is easily between The Witcher 3, of course, Bloodborne came out that motherfucking mm-hmm. year. Hey, I've Bloodborne. never beat it, man. I can't it's see it. so Horn is good. so good. It's so Why is it good. So good. It's so good though. All you do is like die. That's 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 it's the game. It's so good. How Shut is up. Because it's Lovecraft. <laughs> what is up with you guys and dying? Like it's like the Sekiro stuff again. It's just like I play this game. Like yeah, it's cool. It's good. I respect it. But I don't know if it's like something I want to go through, it's and I'm not so gonna look good. back with fond memories of. I'm like, oh yeah, that game. No yeah. other game. I beat it. I'm glad no, I beat it. Uh, I have super fond memories of it. I still don't think I've played a game that nails the Halloween feel as good as like well, like the Cthulhu spooky. Feel. It's so good. Uh, L- Luigi's Mansion comes close. Spooky haunted house levels in in '90s plat- collectible platformers comes close. No other game just like nails the kitschy. It's supposed to be spooky, but not really vibe of Halloween. Better than Bloodborne. Also, I mean, the story's good. Matt, we have our reasons. It's, yeah, it's yeah, it's okay. it's an amazing game. But The Witcher 3 also, I still think I would be hard-pressed to choose a favorite between The Witcher 3, which is the best Western <gasps> RPG I've ever played, and Bloodborne. But this year had Monster Hunter 4 also... What? Mm? Ori and the... Or in Ori the and the Blind, Ori and the Blind yeah. Forest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It had you, you got yours as well, man. It had it Rocket for League. Everyone. It had MGS Five. It had Undertale came out in 2015, which is Mario phenomenal. Maker. Super Mario yeah. Maker came out. Fallout Four. George. Fallout Four, man. Pillars of Eternity. Oh. Why do I remember, and Pillars, why do I remember Fallout 4 coming out a different year than all these other games? It feels like because it was made in a different you, world you remember, than all no, the no, other games. You remember that because it was announced at E3 uh-huh. and then came out in October. Oh, Todd very, Howard very came on stage oh, and was yeah. like, we're, we're making a brand new Fallout, Fallout 4. And then it came out in October, like four months later. And I, I it was another game where I played way too much of that game during the review period. What Fallout Four? Uh huh. Uh huh. Wait, wait, you guys liked it? No, nah, it was fine. No. Oh, I mean, okay. I, was I was about like, to say, I was like, what's wrong with you? I, I like the town like building <laughs> more than the RPG stuff. It's it's fine, but it's it's not bad. It's fine. But yeah, those sure, things fine. like when it fine is a good when yeah. it's just. When it's just fine, just go around and shoot everything s- d- because that's a Fallout game. <laughs> shoot first and ask <laughs> questions later because that's a Fallout game. It's not a Fallout but, game. Ha- marathoning through something that's just fine is not good enough. It's not good enough at all. <laughs> uh, I really liked Splatoon. I really liked Until Dawn. I really liked Rocket League. I really liked a lot of games that came out 2014 other than Fallout 4. I really liked Crypt of the Necrodancer. Yeah, Crypto and Necronancer came out of the year. Xenoblade Chronicles X for the Wii U, that came out. I love that game. I, I don't know. I feel like, I don't know about you, Matt, but 2015, what a what a damn good year. The Witcher 3. like um, The Witcher 3. The Witcher 3, man, changed my life, man. I was like, why? How could the game be this good? It's the best Western I RPG wanna replay it. Yeah. I've, I've ever played. Yeah, and I, there are some good Western RPGs. Yeah, that one. But that man. one takes the cake, man. If man, I'm, I'm a little scared for Cyberpunk, but I'm pretty uh, sure yeah. I'll get something out of it. I'll get something yeah. out of it. Yeah, yeah. Did you? Uh, what did you think of the DLC for The Witcher Three that came out? That's what I need to play. My friend. Oh, says, oh that like was it. good stuff. I Blood bought, I bought stuff, The Witcher yeah. Three for my friend because he, he plays games sometimes. But every every time his birthday comes around, I'm like, all right, I'm gonna get you a game that I've played through and I know that's really good. That you can spend his. So time you just on. bought him The Witcher Three like I four years in a row. Yeah, he bought the <laughs> DLC because he loved it that much. Yeah, it's like perfect game for him. Caveman. So guy. what were we doing? What were we doing in real life in 2015? I moved to Japan. I was in Georgia. Yay. Uh, uh, <laughs> 
I, I, I went nowhere and did nothing of the previous year besides have Fallout 4 reaffirm me that rushing through really big games to review them quickly is not a good way to spend my time. <laughs> I moved to Japan and changed my life. Uh, tell us, tell us the story, young Liam. Uh, I think I've talked about this on the podcast, but basically, as I said in 2014, I was having a miserable time and I wanted to change and I don't know. I felt like getting out of the UK and trying something completely different. I still wanted to make games, but the fire that everybody who would laugh now listening to this podcast considering i get so over enth- overly enthusiastic about making games and playing games but like the fire died after working on gta 5 when did you start making games well i don't know i because i studied programming and well i did computer science in university i was making games while i was in university but you've got to remember like when the three of us were like I guess in college for you guys, but in university for me, that was like 2009, like the availability of stuff like unity and Epic unreal and game maker wasn't as freely available as it is now, or has been for the past couple of years, especially considering YouTube tutorials that exist now. So when I was making games in university, it was very rudimentary HTML really hard program your own engine stuff and then when i worked at rockstar it was like a complete revelation but what i thought was the dream like oh i'm gonna make games forever now died because of the realism of what we now know is the video game industry but now the fire's back because in 2015 i moved to japan and i felt far more inspired to make games because I'm here. The reason I live in Japan now is because of the I played Ocarina of Time when I was six years old. And yeah, no, I don't know. 2015 was a great year for so many reasons to me. So did that change your habits or your understanding of games? Like like how, how Japanese people play them differently? Did that impact your taste? In terms of making games and stuff, it completely changed how I feel about the philosophy of which I make games and stuff like that. And it did make me i will say it was like the turning point of where making games and playing games crossed over into a weird line when i was working at rockstar because of the nature of my job and and stuff it wasn't as creative as i am now in the positions and roles i have been for the past couple of years so playing games was always still always felt like a hobby it didn't feel like naturally entwined with working on a video game Whereas now, actively, anything I like from a video game will in some way influence design decisions I have later when making a game. So now it's kind of like 2015 was the weird line when playing games like Bloodborne made me actively think, oh, that was a really smart design choice. Or The Witcher 3 with its like incredible NPC side quests and stories like, oh, that was an incredibly narrative way of doing things. It was like almost like a a switch had like clicked in my head. And I was like, oh, yes, playing switcher. games. Okay, okay <laughs> I, I retire. <laughs> <laughs> I retire. <laughs> no, it was, it was honestly, it was like a switcher had gone off in my head. And yeah, no, when I thought of when I played games, I now started thinking about them and dissecting them. And I think it was partially just I was completely like free. I felt free for the first time in like four years. It, it felt great. Yeah, 2015 was a great year for games and for me. Mm. What about you, Matt? What were you doing? <sighs> <laughs> 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 Sorry. <laughs> ooh, ooh. Um. Yeah. 2015, 2016 was. Uh, it was I. It was. It was going so good in 2015, <sighs> 2016. Um. Yeah. So we we could <laughs> we could translate to 2016. I don't know if I wanna. <sighs> I don't know if I wanna get in too much of that. But it wasn't necessarily the best time, so it was it was nice to play. Uh, I guess a couple games to 
take your mind off of it a little mm. bit. Yeah. It, even though yeah, yeah. in in some cases games don't really help with certain certain things, right? Sometimes no. Sometimes they no. They only right? enhance. Yeah, they only make they you feel only worse. Enhance, especially the type of games you play. Play play uh, for, from an artist, from a guy who wants you to feel something. You're like, oh no, this is too much. Ugh. It's too much. It's too much. <laughs> Wait, what year did that dragon cancer come I was out? literally just... <laughs> oh, that's 2016. Yeah, I was literally thinking of the same game. <laughs> oh, you, I hate you guys. <laughs> I wasn't doing anything much different in 2015. 2013 to 2015 were super busy years for me. But I think my fondest memories of 2015 were playing in a con hotel room with a bunch of friends we had rocket league set up on one screen and duck game set up on another and it was wonderful and adorable and rocket, having, like, i can't believe best... like rocket league how incredibly popular that became just out of nowhere it's it's one of the best yeah it's, it's good. great examples of video games and, I, I... and we love landon and duck game was amazing that game was there really is so good. much to say about Rocket League, but it leaves me speechless in its simplicity. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, 2016. The year me and George met. Uh, everyone loved Detective Pikachu, right? That came out in 2016. <laughs> Holy shit! Everyone wow. loved Owl Boy, right? Nope. Owl Boy was good. Everyone loved Doom, everyone. Right? Yeah, they did. Everyone loved that dragon cancer, right? Yeah. Oh. I, 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 yeah. Matt loved Final okay. Fantasy 15, right? <laughs> well, I didn't play it then. I played it later for PC. <laughs> I played it then. <laughs> also, for correcting one of the, the decade's earlier mistakes, this is the, much like how the game's actual release went back and forth, this is the actual year The Last Guardian finally came out. Wait. Mm-hmm. Did it? Yeah. Oh, don't tell me I'm wrong no, no, about no, no, that, no. It too. Came out 2016. It came okay, out good. before the Switch? Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah, I can see that. Really? It took forever for it to get released. So, let's see what's super memorable here. Doom 2016 won a lot of games. Oh, my years. God, it did come out in 2016. The Witcher 3. Oh, my God. Here on the dock. The Witcher 2. Oh come on! Th- there, I just fixed. It. I fixed the duck. I took The Witcher Three off the 2016 year. Yeah, happy now. We talked about this, George. XCOM Two, Titanfall Two is a game that a lot of people. So love, I just want. I... I just want to say the best single player shooter that isn't Half Life Two came out that year. Yes, and it was Titanfall Two. Yes, yes, it was. It was so. Why good. I feel like. I, I remember the level where you're going through a machinery assembly yes. line. Yes. Yeah, it was amazing. It was amazing. I remember your robot giving you some cool thumbs up every now and then. Wait, the machinery line wasn't even the best mission of the game. I don't remember much of that campaign besides those. You don't remember the slow, like, passing through time sequence? Okay, now that you mention it, I do, but you had to jog my memory. What? The game was it's good, like the man. best. The best design level in shooting history. How can you say that when Barrels of Fun for Doom 2 exists? Uh, well, uh, I, Doom 2016 pales in comparison to Timefall 2, in my opinion. Uh, Doom 2016 pales in comparison to most other Dooms, in my Thank opinion. Thank you. How come you didn't say this when we had Danny on? <laughs> You just had me ripping into it. Oh, I bought it. Like, you, you, when I said I, bought, I buy games for my friend, uh, I bought wouldn't Doom back for you him. Up. <laughs> but I didn't play Doom. But everyone was saying Doom was great. So I bought Doom for him. You know, and we played it together. Right? This is when I was still in Georgia. So we sat down. We played with it. And it just kept going. And it was the same thing over and over again. Ooh, Shoot. Grab hours. a key card. Shoot. Grab a key card. Hours. So boring and i don't remember the shotgun or the movement feeling as good as everyone else said it would the movement like, you was have a good. kind of slow hover the movement was good but it, yeah compared to like titanfall 2 it, it was not even close that game mm. that game was good doom not so good 
We're the only podcast that's probably saying that for the 2016 yes. chunk. Yeah, I hope everyone loves that game box. except, except I guess oh. us. I love the soundtrack to that game. Oh shit, Far Cry Primal is another big sandbox game I played way too much of in 4 days for a review. Wow, you wasted a lot of time. <laughs> It seriously, <laughs> and we're about to see Damn, like burnout hit bitch. hard in 2017 here. Dark like Soul, I really enjoyed Dark Souls Three. Came Hitman, out there, yeah. Hitman was fun. Mm-hmm. Hitman was fun. Hitman was 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 good fun. Yeah. I I was very impressed with Hitman. George, 2016 was when Overwatch came out. It's when PSVR came out. Yay! 2016 is the year VR got good. You heard it here first. Yep. Oculus Rift came out. That's when VR got good, not PSVR. But okay. I still don't own any of these in 2020. <laughs> 2016 also had Pokemon Go magic happen for a couple weeks. Oh, remember yeah. that? Remember going to the park, George? Yeah, dude. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh my I God. played way too much of Fire Emblem Fates. I'm this slightly is slightly disappointed. The NES Classic slash Mini, depending on your region, oh. came out that year too triggering a, a year or two of small set-top console trends, which that's weird to think about in retrospect. I still don't know why everyone didn't just buy an emulator or a controller for an emulator. People aren't criminals. Dude, I have heard you say that you do it too. We all do. I everyone have a picks their nose. Classic. What are you talking about? Well, I actually bought them when they were out, so there. Mm-hmm. Um, Matt, what tracers. You, what, wait, what, Matt was gonna say something. What were you gonna say, Matt? Oh, <laughs> I well, I had a <laughs> no, no. I well, Pokemon Go it reminded me of um, during that time is when I was starting getting medication. I finally found a doctor that found what was wrong with me <laughs> all these years. It was when I found out Too I had handsome. periodic paralysis like actually knew and um started getting medication and stuff like this is before all that so i was like still getting like uh i, I guess for people who don't know i have like um, periodic paralysis which randomly my body gets paralyzed like if i sleep too long sit down too long from like the head on down and i've like exercised lost weight as you probably guys have seen on the channel i like used to be over 300 and nothing would fix it except when i got the medication and eventually started to get better. And Pokemon Go, I was using that as to like walk around and play Pokemon That's Go. Awesome. That's awesome. That's so cool. And kind of test it out. I remember going to the park and meeting up with George and telling him about it. Yeah, that's that's just what uh, the memory came up. And we were That's we were, so cool. Yeah. I remember filming a couple shots and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, two thousand sixteen was a weird year for me. Weird year. Yeah. yeah, same. That's when I started to shift focus from reviews to weirder topics. Yeah, yeah. Like the Titanfall Two video was specifically about the game's movement. The uh, Dark Souls Three video was specifically about level design. Did you film that I... in a um, cemetery as well? Uh, thankfully, I did not. <laughs> I, I, I was advised against that. I remember uh, Total Biscuit saying that, like, oh, you uh, might want to uh, film it in a cemetery next time. <laughs> 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 like live on the on the on their podcast, uh, whatever it's called. Cool option, yeah, right? Called. Wait, wait, wait. I remember, I remember winning a podcast award that year for the first time and thinking that doing podcasts was a good idea. <laughs> and in 2020, I've still not learned my lesson. <laughs> oh, God. I think that was the year I won the journalism award for my... Yay! Go us, year. George. Uh-huh. Matt could um, walk. <laughs> I don't know which one's more of a victory. I mean, at least you guys got awards. I mean... <laughs> Matt, you got the gift of walking. What are you talking about? Oh, shit. God, what else is there? There's got to be. Um, <clears throat> so there, there was the gambling, gambling, a gambling scandal against 
CSGO YouTubers and streamers who are selling kids gambling products, that's that's going to rear its ugly head in the next few years as bigger companies adopt that that kind of market. <gasps> Tracer's butt was a big controversy. <laughs> yeah. what? Tracer's butt. I forgot about in, that. In a beta version of Overwatch, she had a victory pose where she sticks her butt out and it was objectifying, so they changed it and it made a lot of gamers <laughs> mad. So then they started making porn. They started making lots and lots of porn. No, this is when like this is when Gamergate and Social Justice Warriors reared its ugly head again. I remember this being one of the first big oh, yeah. things afterwards, which is like it's, it's just Blizzard like a, changed a, a... it, and then Twitter did what Twitter does now on a frequent day to ba- daily basis, which is, oh my god, how could you censor like uh the censorship bullshit, fucking social justice warrior, uh, like what we know now as the daily norm. I remember that being one of the first big mm. moments where a big company was targeted yeah. because of a change they made based on, you know, what was sexual evocative nature of a character. I don't know. SAG after voice actors go on strike. That happened in 2016. That was when we started seeing news stories of video game studio Crunch Time popping up. Hey. You know, I wonder, I wonder... If a media conversation about the working conditions at a famous Japanese studio in 2015 might have been the inspiration behind a lot of those major big deal stories that have, like, actually contributed to to real unionization efforts happening starting in 2016. You can can sense George's angry because he's banging the desk on every sentence. I'm also angry because I forgot to talk about Rainbow Six Siege. (laughs) Rainbow Six Siege came out in 2015, but you wouldn't have even known it because the 2015 launch version was bad. In 2016, they roll out Operation White Snow or whatever it was called in January, where they added the Canadian operator in a frozen ship level, and it just starts going up, 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 up from there on out. By the time 2017 rolls around, Rainbow Six Siege is a huge player, and I was one of the only people to give it a good review on launch. White Snow sounds like a George Magfest panel. I think that was uh, oh. my my street name in the Japanese arcades. <laughs> Here he comes. What All right. Well, I think that sums up like the two biggest years of the list. 2015 and 2016 are, are nothing to, to shake a stick at. Oh, my God. Wait, wait, wait. We did not talk about the original Nintendo Switch announcement trailer that launched in 2016. I remember that thing oh, being yeah, almost the, wait, as big that, a deal as yeah. the Switch itself. <laughs> That was October, right? That was October when they, when Nintendo teased that picture of Mario, uh, like a uh, like a mascot Mario, uh, uh, pulling a curtain back. Do you remember that picture? I remember the picture, and I remember it being really creepy, and I remember really it becoming a meme. Really creepy, and Nintendo were like, "Coming them. soon," and it's <laughs> yeah, it, and yeah, you're like, "Ugh." Uh, so 2016 was when that that trailer dropped of all the pretty people playing their Nintendo Switch at rooftop parties and everyone and was like, "That will never fucking happen," and it happened. In the in perfect segue, George. Go on, do your thing. In in the year of our Lord 2017. <laughs> yeah, uh, Nintendo's marketing. It's it's almost hard to remember now because we're so used to it. We're still in like. A good Nintendo period. You know, every like five, six years you enter into whatever was the opposite of the previous Nintendo era. The Wii U era was not a good era. The Switch era is a fine era. The, yeah, um, the yeah, Wii I era was I like moved to Japan, middling to I good. Took, when I moved to Japan, I took my Wii U with me. <laughs> Do you still have it? I still have it. Ooh. Okay, I still have mine. Matt, where is your Wii U? You know it's gone. <laughs> I want mine to be I gone. Sold a lot I, of things I thought I would. I came over here. <laughs> I I pawned I pawned mine off to my girlfriend so she could watch Netflix. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> but she sold it. I'm like, oh, I fair enough. S- sell it. I just I just was like, I don't want this in my apartment. You can have it. Look, it plays Netflix. <gasps> Great. <laughs> in 2017, I can't help but notice that my hardware habits change. I start either playing games a lot more on the Switch, and I start enjoying games a lot more if they're VR games. 
Big releases that year included, uh, Matt, for you, we got Hollow Knight. Hollow Knight. And I'm now, I am literally playing that, like, <laughs> in between pot, every, every been, now and then been months, over the though. past couple weeks. It's been months. Well, yeah, though. but I'm on and off with it, and that's a, that's a big-ass game. No, it's um, not. A Wait, of... Hollow Knight came in 2017? Holy shit. What that's that seems reasonable to me. Online, why does why does Hollow Knight Two needs to come out? It needs to hurry up. And Bl- Blind Forest Two needs. To Dude, twenty seventeen Breath of the Wild came out. Come on. Man. Oh yeah, Breath of the Wild got everyone's game I of the year. Got that. everyone's Liam of the Year award. Does everyone? I think know, the right? Same? Matt? Is everyone just a single? Yeah. Brain? Fuck both of I, you. It's amazing. Come on. See, Matt and I are capable of independent original <laughs> yeah. thought, and that's why you're, we you're. are able to uh, clearly see through the guys Kojima of the Breath of the Wild. see your IQ is above 150. <laughs> guys, you know, I had previously mentioned how marathoning through really long sandbox games made me not like sandbox games. Breath of the Wild is the one. That Don't was the one that made me realize then. I was doing Don't it do wrong. Don't do it then. I don't anymore. Since 2017 and onwards, my games are going to be so like Breath, a so lot no, less. So, George, you owe Breath of the Wild as the sacrifice <laughs> for making I you guess. see sense. <laughs> oh, sense. Okay. It's like good business sense to rush through games and get reviews out during the launch hype. But I guess it's good mental health sense to uh, still glean a sense of enjoyment out of the lifetime hobby that's always been with you from like cradle to grave. Breath, yeah, that Breath does make Wild sense. Breath the best but... game that year. Easily. Super Mario Odyssey okay. came out that year as well, and I know you guys hate that as well, so fuck you. I don't uh, hate I'm, Breath I'm, of the Wild, yeah. but Mario Odyssey was well, just Mario Odyssey. I think I I'm more warmer on Mario Odyssey than Breath of the Wild, but that's also because my brain associates Breath of the Wild with just like bad internet comments and bad internet communities and me thinking I'm a weirdo with bad taste. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't like yeah, Zelda. A very, Oh my God. Very eventful years. Okay, 2017, I played through um, Link Between Worlds on hero mode and thought it was one of the best Zelda games I played in a decade. And Breath of the Wild felt like a lot of the other sandbox games I've been playing this decade. And that's probably because I rushed it. it. Yeah. Uh, we we uh, failed to mention that 2017 was the most important year of all time for the reason mm, of... Mm, you saw first big campaign length VR game that's an old franchise that no. sold a shitload of and and we did go to Japan. Okay. No, that's pretty cool, but no. Oh. <laughs> we became dad and sons. We became dad and I sons. I was wondering. I was like, I we remember be- playing Breath of the Wild for TLVG in the, what, uh, the beginning of the year. It was the end of end of 2017. Yeah, we like. We, I remember rushing to get it done before the podcast. I, what were we talking about on the first couple of test episodes? I remember talking about Xenoblade Chronicles two. I remember talking about that. I can't, what were we talking about around I'm the time? Loading it up now. I guess Super Mario Odyssey was the tail end of that. Okay, in retrospect, Super Mario Odyssey, eh or nah or eh. It was for me. It was a yeah. It wasn't as good as Breath of the Wild, but I still really enjoyed it. Um, it came, it see, came that, at a really bad time in my life. On that first episode in yeah. 2017, we giggled about the Game Awards, speculated on what a FromSoft game by FromSoft makers of Souls games could be. Wasn't that Elden Ring? And uh, No, that was going to no, be Sekiro, Sekiro. I, I'm yeah, guessing. Sekiro, yeah, Sekiro, I guess. Yeah, yeah. And wrapped up with a nice, refreshing game of Guess That Game or something. I, I guess. What we games are we playing? What, what the events. fuck are we doing? Oh, how unprofessional uh, of us. We watched the the episode eight of Star Wars. Um, <laughs> PUBG. We were talking about PUBG back then. Yeah, George, and, weren't you um, playing PUBG a lot? I did. I, I did do a lot of, of Pub and NG PUBG and- talk. So one thing we didn't talk about in 2015, we totally missed this on the major news story because it didn't seem like major news to us. But in retrospect for the whole world, this was a huge ass big deal that happened in 2015. China lifts gaming bans. (laughs) So in 2017, you guys are going to remember that PUBG is going to catch on in China. We on, couldn't um, go one episode without China. (laughs) Well, (laughs) it's actually an extreme. I'm just messing. Yeah, they're they're the number one market in games. Chinese games are come starting to come out now, and and games have been made for China. The for biggest the past game, the, the third biggest game of last year was that that Hunters whatever it was called, 
the Chinese hunters thing. Yeah, the Chinese game nobody knows about in the West, of course, but was massive. Um, 2017 releases include uh, Cuphead, Resident Evil Seven. Okay, Resident Evil 7, in retrospect, I feel might be the game I remember most from that year. Even though we had Breath of the Wild and Mario Odyssey, I think I have the vivid, most fondest memories of RE7 and VR. Like, absolutely, you know, the more I think about it, yeah, more, there's no question. I totally remember that game way better than the others. And in 2017, I would not have picked it because it's so short and sweet. But in retrospect, I think I totally would pick that as my game of the year for 2017. Yakuza 0 came out that year, and that was a damn fine game as well. Pyre was was damn good. Uh, Wolfenstein yeah, 2 was good. Destiny was good 2 fun. came out once again to a rocky launch, but then became yeah. <laughs> the pretty decent ass game it is now mm. that I still enjoy. So when putting together this list, I had to differentiate between the launch of Fortnite and the launch of Fortnite Battle Royale in 2017. Yeah, because Fortnite didn't do very well when it came uh-huh, out. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, very, very, once again, story of the decade, right? A very different launch than what the final product Fortnite turns out to be a year different. later. And then nobody realizes, or a lot of the people who play Fortnite now don't realize that the Fortnite they're playing is actually Fortnite Battle Royale, which was an expansion on Fortnite, which was a completely different game mode. In retrospect, I don't think I remember Near Automata as much as I thought I would be remembering it in 2017. Yeah, wasn't that what I actually thought would be my game of the year that year? And now when I think back, I'm more like, no, RE7, George. I thought that was 2018. No, Nier Automata and RE7 were contenders for 2017. Let let me double check that, actually, because my my outline is all over the place. Uh, We got... One for George, February 2017. February 2017, Liam. February. Holy shit. So yeah, for me, for me, I feel like that was a transformative year because I saw my tastes change in real time. Like Breath of the Wild was the line where after that, I was just like, okay, I got to rethink big games differently from here on out. Like my my video topics totally switched over from focusing on reviews to focusing on on journalism and essays. I started the Patreon campaign. I, I went to Germany and made a video about gaming in communist East Germany. Matt, what were you up to? <laughs> oh, man, I don't think I played a lot of games this year. <clears throat> this year, it's I was so because, distracted because... with life. We started the podcast, but yeah. we started the podcast. We started the podcast, like, yeah. George called me, and I was just like, I don't know, man. I don't know if I'm in the right place. <laughs> <laughs> George was like, get on here. <laughs> for, yeah. for 2017 and 2018, I, I was like not in a great place. Yeah, yeah. 20, end of yeah. 2017, I told you guys, like, I don't know, man. I'm in a, I'm in a bad <laughs> still place did it. right now. <laughs> still bad did. place. And we still did it. We I, still did I, it. I, I would like to say we're better now, right? Everyone good? Oh, we fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I feel better about what games I like and what games I'll be playing in the future. I don't think... Well, no, I'm, I'm not kidding. Like, in 2017 and 2018, I was legitimately rethinking things because AAA is not even... When looking at the list of games on the decade, there are less major releases in 2018 and 2019 but, but, and 2017 by far but what because about, the middle tiers are where it's at but what about life george yeah, do yeah, you feel that, better that about life question. yeah oh hell no <laughs> dude you know listen george S- you gotta be positive canadians be positive. were shot down yesterday over iran oh my God. Because of tensions that seven. my government started. Yeah, stop. <laughs> stop. So now the <laughs> Shit, Canadians and Americans started? have reason to hate each other. The Americans in Iraq have like 50 years of reasons to hate each other. But I never thought Canadians would have a reason to hate Americans. Well, stop fucking bombing people like you were doing for the whole past decade. Yes, you, us personally. I'd have to convince 300 I, I, million of my neighbors to go on a generational uh, general strike to I'll, do that. You I'll realize how much Trump work that is? Right now. Stop. Yeah, please do. Stop bombing. Yeah. And then and then we'll move on to 2018, which Smash Ultimate oh boy. came out. And Into uh, the Breach. 
So <laughs> guess what game? Okay, so when I was making my list, I made them in alphabetical order, which means that the 2018 game I played the most through 2018 and never actually finished because it's so goddamn big, and I didn't make a video on it at all until the very end of the year. Assassin's and it was Creed not Odyssey. Even, uh-huh. That, that's that's <laughs> an example of my taste changing in action. Big ass sandbox game. I don't even care about finishing it. I was just playing it for my own personal enjoyment until a new topic came along long on its own rather than me playing the game first and knowing i would be doing a topic in it from the get-go i can't i can't i can't believe we we spent almost a whole year asking for assassin's creed odyssey updates Assassin's creed odyssey is the most played game of 2018 i sure as hell would not call it my most well remembered or my game of the year smash ultimate i guess into the breach i guess as the years change that the retrospect change because now I totally wish that I had played RE7 as my game of the year. Anyways, yeah, um, I also gave God of War a world. Didn't really feel that, but yeah. that's what wiped the game of the year awards that, that year. That uh, That and RDR2. Return of the um, Open I... Inn, that mm. came out that year. Oh, we're RDR2 on was something I would. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. we're, we're deep into it. R- RDR2, again, that's like a big ass sandbox game. Haven't even started it yet. I bought a copy of it months ago and it's just been sitting on my shelf because I know that when I get into it, that's that's a real obligation that's going to take energy and time away from other things. Um, Detroit Become Human was funny. I enjoyed it <laughs> as Why a rental. Why is that here? Why is that here? Uh, Hitman 2 was fun. I didn't Dragon Ball it. Fighters came out that year. That was good fun. Subnautica was good fun. I still need a friend Monster to play Hunter a way World? out with. I need, I need a friend. Somebody. Mon- a way out is fun. We we all enjoyed Monster Hunter World, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That uh, was good. Yeah, just not very memorable. I I do struggle to pick one out of the 2018 list that Tetris jumped effect? out to me. It's oh just Oh my god, Tetris, I know why. Matt, it's just Tetris that <laughs> that came out that year. I mean that that is okay. just Tetris. It's not. <laughs> it's not uh, anything special. Liam, it's just Tetris. I, I, how do you feel about Return of the Oberdin with two years of retrospect in you? I, more like one year. Uh, one year yeah, it's half. more like one and a bit years. Um, I would like to go back and play it. I I don't know. I that game was incredible when I got to play it before it released, and then when I spent like a year forgetting about having helped out on it, and then getting to play it fresh. And I was like, man, this is a really fucking smart game. It deserved what it got that year. Like I think it won design at the GDC Awards or whatever. It, it's a great game. I, and I, I, off the podcast, you have to explain to me what the hell that game is because I tried it for a second. It's a detective. It's it's basically and I did just not a understand game. what to do. It's a it's a detective game. That's all it is. That's essentially all it is. But you the look UI at it. is just so so shit. <laughs> like you don't know what it what it is unless I'm not understanding. Am I not? Am I not smart enough to understand what the did, heck did it's you, trying did to you, show me? Did you get the book? Did yeah, you get the book? I'm looking did through the book. I'm the like, book okay, you? you're showing me a picture of a person. Okay, what does this yeah. mean? What is it's this? Like guess who? But it's, did, like, it's like long form guess who. You just have to guess who the people are and how they died. Okay, so you just keep roaming around the ship. I'm guessing. Oh it, fuck. I forgot to mention that, that a gamer got killed in 2017 from a swatting incident. Oh. Anyway, <laughs> whoa, okay. left swirl. Okay. Anyways, you guys continue. To <laughs> no, the no, I think we're. I think. I think the moment's gone. I think we're. I think we're about done here. I think we're about done. Wait, when did Wolfenstein yeah, okay. One come out? That was that was a good game. Wolfenstein One. I, I thought two, it was, that was uh, 2000 earlier. 2000, way 10? earlier. 2000. Uh, 2000 uh no no 14 14 and 17 honorable, and mention, you know? honorable mention i thought it was just gonna be a regular shooter and it was not it was actually a pretty decent game oh, i don't know about uh, part Matt, two to but... the 2018 was when dead cells came out Dead cells was good i i beat that no i don't know i think i beat it on the first run but i think there's more to it there's like li- different ways or something like that. I, I didn't. I didn't understand. There's like a. I think they have DLC or something like that. Because I I reached the end of it 
in a couple hours and then yeah and then that was it i love looking at these lists and realizing how my tastes right now are not what they were back then because while 2018 was happening i probably would have picked hitman 2 or pillars 2 as my game but in retrospect subnautica like oh yeah, God, you really I so many fond that, memories. You? i really liked subnautica yeah. especially since so much of what i was playing was in vr and you see the ocean all around you spider-man was amazing god of war was amazing no oh, okay it was well. Wait, 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 wait. I mean, it was Spider Man was great. A, God of War, a pretty good time. Was a yeah. good time because of the action. Yeah. But the story was so unfocused. Like I said before, <laughs> it was just like, what am I doing? We're just walking around, constantly doing fetching quests. Like it's it's that type of game. But was it very good to look at? Yes. Yes, it was. <laughs> yes, it was. I want to say since 2017 to 2019, AAA quality has jumped up by a lot, while quantity has gone down a lot. And Good. a lot of what I'm enjoying in recent years are stuff like Subnautica and Oberdin and Outer Wilds, like peaceful first-person exploration games seem like they're getting a foothold in, and I'm, I'm, I'm really jazzed about that. I'm glad that we live in an age where the 2018-2019 era is completely different to the 2008 2009 era which was same old mm. annual mm. stuff where uh. we do still get call of duty we still get assassin's creed yeah, but it is a it is a different era there is games like oberdin and subnautica and into the breach that come out and are hugely lauded alongside AAA stuff like God of War and Spider-Man's Marvel adventures. Like, we live in that era now where a game like... um, What's come out in 2019 that is going to be massive? You know, even stuff like Stardew Valley and stuff like that came out in the past decade that we haven't talked about that is like one of the highest selling games of all time. And that would and have it's, never it's been violent too. And that would have never have ever been possible in like 2007, 2008, 2009. So I'm the, the changes in not only, I think we have definitely, as we've talked about the negative side of what has changed in terms of the social economic video game, pastures i don't know like the- i still feel like like corridor and modern first person shooters have too much power over the rest of the genres though i don't like, think I still they had do that m- i don't think well they in, do. in 2019 i had that moment where i played destiny 2 and halo reach back to back and that's one area of the industry where there's not been what, a lot what call of duty game came out this year george uh it was modern warfare reboot which again is like another example of something that i feel looks but how much did that just kind of sweep under the rug a lot more gamers than us care about it it's always getting controversies on the top reddits but it sold really well too what i'm saying is it's not the same era it's it just isn't like it's a remake of my a reboot of <laughs> but it doesn't it, do, it doesn't take up the same market space it used to like before it would take up like 70 percent of the market space whereas now it's like oh yeah. shit stardew valley has just sold like five million copies or whatever it's like it's completely still too different much. still too still much too I agree. much there is still work to be done right but it is a better space i'm gl- i'm glad that this past decade has reflected better in in regards to what games get made than the previous one. I, I feel like 2013 and 2014 were, were, were where some things were lagging there. When the Wii U was on its way out, which is right when it was on its way in. <laughs> <laughs> okay, least favorite Ooh. years. What do we think? Least favorite year. Oh, uh, before we get to 19? <laughs> uh we'll, we won't be doing much 2019 talk because we'll just do the same thing over again next week for the dad awards oh okay that makes i thought sense. that was the big reveal i thought we were gonna have a big reveal about that well i guess, I guess uh, we just had the- yeah an hour and 41 minutes of suspense has built up to that big reveal there you go there you go <laughs> yeah and to move on to 20 
And there 19. you go. Cut the episode. <laughs> <laughs> it's, Least oh, favorite good. year? I don't know. Um, 2012, probably. Borderlands 2, Far Cry 3. Yeah, that was the Spec Ups the line in year. That was just the, the year where the I only year. played Fire Emblem Awakening, really. Mm-hmm. Moving to Rockstar. And didn't have many consoles in my new place. I just remember when Modern Warfare came out and Grand Theft Auto 4 came out, those games broke such insanely high record sales numbers that for the next four or five years, there were so many clones off that, that by the time 2012 rolls we're around, we it. We're, 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 we're playing Call of Duty Blocks Yeah, but 2011 2. had I, Dog Souls. Battlefield 3 came out the year before. Like, there's still... FPS is... is is stagnant yes, but, now. Like the big 2019 Call of Duty is, is a reboot but, of a 2007 Call of Duty. But what I'm Call saying is if you think about the games you just mentioned from like 2007, what other games can you tell me from that year that stand out like other indie games and smaller double A stuff that we're getting now? Don't Google it. Uh, I can see you Google Bioshock it. Bioshock has some ideas. What? Well, but... <laughs> How am I supposed to fairly answer the question if I can't because research it beforehand? Because you can think of games in this past decade that have really... Oh, yeah, the Orange that's, Box. That's fucking Valve. They're a billionaire company. Different thing. Yeah. Yeah, it really sucks not having indie this games decade, on this list. <laughs> or at least a bunch of indie games. This decade has been a great decade for video games because indie games are able to expand and be in the same market space as games like Call of Duty. I feel like this decade has been way better than the prior decade for smaller studios. Even though the market is hard to sell games now compared to maybe 2010, 2011, but because the space was new for Xbox Live Arcade, PSN, and all that kind of stuff, now is way better in terms of creativity and like acquired taste in gaming than ever before. But the genres have stabilized. I don't know. We do, We you don't. When was the last time you walked into like a GameStop and was like, "I'm gonna go over to the shooter section"? Well, GameStops you don't really walk into. Games, yeah, GameStop. I said it right. Um, that's why I don't but like. The, my point is that like genre is stale. like uh like I don't know. It's like a tangible thing because we use digital for the most part. Like it's a tangible existence. Now, you go on Steam and you just look at the homepage and you're like, ah, game, 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 game. It doesn't say, like, here's the new big shooter. Here's the new action RPG. Yes, they have Steam tags and stuff, but do you pay attention to that? No. Exactly. So, compared to 2008, where it was like, here's the brand new hot shooter in GameStop, and you walk over to the, the that section of games, hmm. genre is different. Well, it's tangible now. The other different thing about this decade that I think has seen aspects slow down is is the the technology curve. Yeah. Like it, at the end of 2010, if you looked back at games that released in 2000 and zero, agree, they looked yeah. way different. And this is the first decade in maybe the history of video games where the games that came out in 2010 kind of sort of still look yeah, like they could absolutely. hold a yeah, hold yeah, a yeah, candle yeah. to to games in 2019. Yeah, I think so too. Let's look at this list. Limbo is obviously a game that still looks great. Halo Reach still looks fine. Uh, Mass Effect 2 still yeah. looks actually good. I mean, exactly, right? The, it has stabilized in terms of technology for sure, but I, I'm happy personally. I don't know. It seems you feel different. I don't know about Matt either. Like, Matt, how do you feel compared to like the prior generation where it was like the hybrid of the PS2 and the Xbox 360 compared to what we have now in terms of video games, where it's kind of all over the place a little bit. I don't understand what what's <laughs> like like I, what I mean is like the games you were able to buy right. between 2000 mm -hmm. and 2009 compared uh... to 2010 to 2019, like with with stuff like indie uh, with like Dead Cells and Hollow Knight and. All the right. indie games we get now compare, and also Com the double, the triple A stuff that we've talked about, Dark Souls maybe. 
Yeah. And like what PS2 days I, still when the PS2 come yeah, out. Yeah, like the obviously 2005 yeah. the Xbox 360 came out and stuff like that. For me, I feel like this decade has been better than what was 2000 to 2009. I liked this generation I better. I played I think I I feel like I played a lot more games the previous decade. I feel so too, but I don't necessarily think that's was because better, the quality was better. better. I think it's because I was a, a teenager and I had more time. Very, I think the games true. now are better. I think the games now are, are, are a lot better almost actually. Yeah, it, it would be weird because when I think of games, I do think about a lot of this decade more than I think about the last one. Even though I've grown up with a lot of 360 and PS2 you know jrpgs and stuff like that um because i do think about how i do think about the mass effect series i think about dragon age even though it's just like right that year just before yeah uh, like yeah i would i would probably say if i had to pick a a decade it would probably be this one well last decade sorry <laughs> yeah the 2020s right here yeah that's right oh my god we're in we're in the 20s George, would you would you pick the prior decade? Not the prior one, but I really miss the PS2 era, and I feel like there's gonna be, I feel like there's gonna be an uncertainty mm -hmm. having lived through it, where it it does not feel as sturdy having a game industry that's uh, supported by so many wobbly pillars, because the AAA scene, I I mean it, the numbers keep going up, but you constantly see opinions on it sour, so I. That seems like a rocky foothold. The esports scene pulls in shitloads of numbers, right? But I don't know many people IRL who are into that, and there's scandals about them inflating it with, with bots and such. So that's a wobbly platform to hold on. There's super solid mid-tier games, but those are riskier investments. Classic story being Cuphead requiring the guy to mortgage his house. So it feels like a wobblier pillar. So 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 my my response to that would be between 2000 and 2009, a game like Cuphead could never exist because it's a two-person studio who could never have afforded to make that game because the technology was so expensive, and now those guys are millionaires. However, before the global economic recession and the development of cheap indie tools, those guys would probably just have a stable, anonymous life, having an okay job but with the rest of us. that's not what they wanted to do, So right? I don't so know if they They wanted to make a game. Well, how do you... The question is, does that really make you happy and fulfilled on a human I level? No though? idea. They're the guys who made Cuphead, not me. Like, Right. You would want to ask them, but I would seriously question whether or not it's an actual better situation to be making this stuff versus having steadier jobs or steadier economic conditions without making this stuff. Uh, that's such in the a PS2 way to era, approach this. And, and, no, it, it has to do with job security and the health of the entire economy overall. During the PS2 era... You had really strong pillars of support from from the AAA publishers, where you didn't need an indie scene as much as you would now because they could greenlight more riskier investments. Would, so stuff like Katamari Damachi was a product of that. we've why so many indie game, uh, so many indie studios and other studios have popped up is because so many people didn't want to work in AAA, which was the only video game existence in the world. There was no such thing as there was like maybe double A, but even the double A studios then and now the triple A studios of now. Like there was no such thing as small studios between 2000 and 2010 as it's known today. There were in the 90s. Because though. that vid. Like they were small studios, but they also. Would, but, there, there was but no distinction. Blizzard, between yeah, whether the, or not but they that's were the thing is indie. Blizzard were a small studio in the 90s. Like that. It, it's, it's hard to quantify because video games were so, such a. Such a, a, a new budding thing, right? We are... Like, I'll agree that this decade is better than the recession one, but, I mean, I'm a... We're all doomers, right? We are all of an age where we saw a more stable global economy and political situation in the decade before that one. Like, like this decade has been the recovery one, and yet w the world is still going to shit, so I still so, don't feel great. I don't know whether it's me. I think the, ga I think the games are better, personally, this past decade, but also it, because we m bridged into it, when I think about it, this decade is better from a game de development job standpoint because of the games we get to make now for the money we can make them. Because when I think of 2000 to 2009... 
I think of my job at Rockstar. That was what everybody's job making games was. Triple A, turning out games, big budget, because they're the only games that existed that were funded. And it was turgid. Whereas now, creative indie studios and studios of like 50 people or less can make games on smaller budgets and reap better profits if it's a success, which, yes, I agree, the pillars are wobbly a little bit if you're not smart and the market goes against you, but same as any existing market. But in terms of, like, making games and being creative and having a job that you're happy with and that kind of thing, I feel like this is a way better decade for game creators than ever before. Mm. I know I... Yeah. Well, I... <laughs> You guys are getting technical. I, I'm usually just thinking about the game, so I'm thinking about like, you know, Portal and Golden Sun and all, basically all the two, uh, the yeah, DS yeah, yeah. games, all the, like all these games that used to be just like tossed out. I mean, there was just so many, like, and you had weird stuff like Fear <laughs> Effect and you know Midnight Club Two and Psychonauts <laughs> and you know there's like a bunch of stuff like that. You know, like I miss you, that. You, I miss that. Do you think that's our ignorance of not being able to buy games all the time compared to the fact that we now get games that like we get what 200 new releases on Steam a day? You you think I don't I don't think so. Like there's no list that shows you I don't know. Like you, there's no NBA Street. I would I actually that's right super interesting because right I I would really I know what you mean when there was like the filler gaps of titles. I, I know what you mean, but I would like to compare the ratio of games getting released n now, what the averages are compared to then. Because although I still agree that I feel like more games released, got released back then, there was just games all the time. Yeah, I think that's just time. because I didn't pay attention to it because I was just a kid and I played games when I could. Whereas now when my job is to focus on like every single release that comes out, I know about it. It doesn't feel like a game such as, I don't know, a big release like Death Stranding comes out once in like a blue moon. But mm. actually we get new indie games all the time and we got stuff like, what is the biggest thing on Twitch right now? Escape from Tarkov. Have either of you played that game? Do you even yeah, know what it I is? Yeah, but I know of it. I know of it. But I, I, I had no, I had no idea it, what it was it... compared like until like a week ago. I, see, it the is, thing is... We have this weird market what happens on discord all the time i need a game to play and i look and there is not much let me tell you there is not much you have to really <laughs> like if there's some good indie and and mostly all the good games that you'll find will be indie games that only a handful of people have known about you know remember when barry came on and he started spitting out all these games i've never heard of these are all just indie games you know yeah. back then you know, you had you had games. You there was a purpose of going to GameStop because like all the games on the shelf were like potential games you can get. Nowadays, you go to GameStop, there's a bunch of trash. <laughs> there's a bunch of trash everywhere. The selection is going to be smaller if you look in that world. Like when I was making the outline, like Wikipedia has an article called "That Game That Year in Games," and at the bottom there's a list of critically acclaimed games that get over an 85 or something on Metacritic. And for whatever reason, of the AAA, highly rated, highly budgeted world they pick from those selections, it's incredibly smaller for 2018 and 19. And when I filled that out from other sources, it turns out that, no, they're just kind of under the woodwork a bit. You, you have to dig hard. You got to dig harder. But Subnautica is a way better game than any anything the AAA industry made in 2018. Yeah. I think that's the thing, right? Like, if you walked into GameSpot, a uh, GameSpot, GameStop. Oh, it happens to me like all game, the time. Like, in, in, you know, 2007, yeah. you'd walk in and there'd be, like, a million. Oblivion, uh, like, uh, and, like, oh, the PS3 stuff, Killzone, you know, you have all the big stuff, right? But you wouldn't have, like, a game like Subnautica or Undertale. It, ju it just wouldn't exist. I feel like you could. But we didn't, and there is a reason for that. We didn't because there is a reason for that. The The, the industry di wasn't able to fund or have the technology to make games like that for what they can right now. 
which I think is like Toby Fox would not have been able to make Undertale in 2007. Yeah. He was making fan made stuff on Flash game websites because that was where the technology was at. Yeah. Like we were not able to make what we're able to make now. And that's why I think this past decade has been great yeah. for games and game creators because we've seen stuff like a short hike this year, which I didn't know anything about. And I played it and thought it was amazing. You know, like Justin made Into the Breach and. Into the Breach wouldn't have existed unless those guys could use Unity in their spare time. Yo, I, I get really hung up on Gamergate. Yeah, and I, it sucks from a social, social economic platform. Like, like I want to go back to the previous decade, not for the games, but just to get away from that yeah. bullshit. Agreed. Wow. I think in 2020, we're still not better. The world is what it is. No turning but the back world now. is shit as well right yeah. now too. You just gotta, you just gotta surround yourself with people who are. So not I want, I want to go back. Negative. Worse games, better economy, better community. I kind of want to go yeah. back for those reasons. We can make it better. We can foster a know. great, brand new world, the I... Dan and Sons country. Yeah. Okay. I also want to point out that, Liam, you've technically lived in a different country for those years. You don't have to worry about armed, trigger-happy SWAT guys no, coming to your house North like Korea we do. Flying missiles over our heads instead. Yeah, but that's How happened a lot less than people getting shot by the cops. So far? <laughs> How many times that have you gotten shot by the cops? How many times have you gotten shot by the cops? <laughs> See, the thing about nature That's is you know you can't black. trust it. The cops you're supposed <laughs> exactly. to trust. Yeah, Matt okay. has okay. way better insight okay. than the rest of us. The weather's always been a dick. Cops you don't know, and that makes it worse. Been a dick. Listen, listen. Dad 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 and son's Patreon and we we, we build a city. We build a city just oh, for we build a city. For dad, sons, and twenty twenty. And moms. It's it's the big year for the dad and sons. We're starting off right by reflecting on a decade, <laughs> only to look forward to the new decade. Let's build the city. We're, we're, the city will be called Dadton, <laughs> Dadville, Didopolis. Did we did we even mention in a formally correct way that we're doing 2019 next <laughs> next week? Ah, uh, okay, okay. If it, if it has to let's, be said, hello no, and thank no, you for let's, returning. Let's, let's, let's do it. Well, let's, I, I don't,